KSP-1 was a brilliant game that grew into something unique. It was the only rocket physics simulator available for the average Steam user. It also remains one of the most difficult games to learn how to play, because it combines all the nuance of flying a spaceship with all the complexity of designing one. KSP-2 builds on that heritage, with a ground-up rebuild of the entire game in a new engine, with better physics, major graphical improvements, a massive UI overhaul, and streamlined Space Center design. While the early access version offers less overall than KSP-1, it does lay a foundation for the future that promises to grow into a superior product over time. There are a lot of changes to the various menu systems and workspaces. The old division between the vehicle assembly building and the aerospace hangar is gone, replaced by a single, massive assembly building, where both rockets and space planes can be put together. This structure is much bigger than its predecessors, with a new interface layout offering many of the same reports and functions available in KSP-1. The most notable part of this restructure are the changes to camera controls within the VAB. After an awkward adjustment phase, it starts being possible to get the camera where you want it. There is a setting that switches between vertical and horizontal builds, helping further focus the camera to a given task. Once I knuckled down and started building something to fly, it took me about two hours to hone a small rocket down to a complete, successful orbit and recovery. Like KSP-1, this process was very much trial and error, and then more trial, with each iteration seeing constant incremental improvement, until enough improvement was finally made, and my design was able to successfully navigate Kerbin and land near the VAB. One of the biggest UI changes, and one which the tutorials explore in depth, is the new navigator ball. This used to be located at the dead bottom center of your screen, and worked in concert with an altimeter at the top dead center, along with other controls and indicators scattered about. The new navigation ball concentrates all that information at the bottom left of your screen, revising, refining, and compressing a ton of information into a smaller space, which I believe to be a major improvement. The time warp menu is larger and much easier to navigate in-game. Your ship is more visible at all camera positions, and the overall level of detail has increased. One of the major improvements here is to the physics model, which underlies the warp function. In KSP-1, it was not possible to warp during an engine burn. Now the game allows it, with plans to enable ultra-high-speed burn warping at an interstellar scale in the future. The staging menu has been cleaned up though at the cost of losing some more advanced information. The original game staging system worked wonderfully, so KSP-2 has kept things pretty much the same, though with some notable refinements that tie the staging menu and its various elements together more closely. Most of the menu's essential functions work as they did in KSP-1. Sound design is much improved over KSP-1. With moving parts getting new animations, the game, even in alpha, looks and feels better than its predecessor, with an aesthetic and art style revision to reflect new capabilities that its predecessor did not have. Launching a rocket feels more visceral, especially if you have a good set of headphones or a subwoofer. Rocket exhaust fans out as you transition from atmosphere to vacuum, providing a powerful visual indicator about the environment you are operating in. The new design and improved graphics have done a lot for the Kerbals themselves, which feature more prominently across the game. They were always cartoonish, with a very minion-like aesthetic that was just cute enough to be empathetic without feeling like you were murdering puppies at every failure. KSP-2 takes these positive elements and magnifies them, making the Kerbals feel more engaged with their world than in the past. At the same time, the game pushes this whimsical sense of discovery that reminds me of the first Harry Potter movie, Space Camp, or The Explorers, while still remaining grounded and encouraging. This is important because it takes multiple rocket launch attempts to get a good design hammered out. You are going to fail often and completely, with only incremental improvements on each attempt, especially in the early game. Like with KSP-1, it's very important to start small, even in sandbox mode. I highly recommend using only small and extra small parts on your first rocket. Things will go much easier. When I left KSP-1, I had a bunch of advanced mods, like the MechJeb Autopilot, 
settlement mods, and various other add-ons that aim to make large and more powerful ships a possibility. I am not surprised to see that most of the touchpoints on the currently published roadmap have features that are derived from some of these mods. There is already a small selection of near-future hydrogen engines, a nuclear reactor, and larger thermoelectric generator available to play with, though some of the stock catalog is still missing on day one. This translates to an experience that is ultimately less than KSP-1, making the full asking price a bit scuffed. In its current form, $30 or $40 seems a better fit, and would have been a great way to reward players for buying in early. With a full price comes full expectations, so here's hoping KSP-2 can meet those expectations before community goodwill dries up. The entire onboarding process took me just over an hour. That includes initial startup, adjustments to the graphics, and then moving through each of the tutorial sessions in order from top to bottom. None of these lessons are individually longer than five minutes, with some around the two minute range. It's easy to pick up and progress piecemeal with minimal commitments and using a locally managed video playback system. You heard me right. Everything happens in game. You will not be referring to your web browser for YouTube videos to get started. The tone, voice acting, and in-game scripting are tight. On my system, the entire process was crash and error-free, even accommodating and responding to mistakes I made. The voice acting and animatics are excellent, with encouraging and enthusiastic dialogue that is sure to keep younger players fully engaged. The accomplishments here should not be understated. Given these tutorials, we'll be introducing kids to actual rocket science in a way that I found entertaining as a jaded 30-year-old. These tutorials, even in the later packages, do not address any of the more advanced concepts like engineering reports, center of gravity, and resource management. These are systems that become very important in the advanced stages of play for KSP-1. I suppose that these will be topics left to the player base to sort out and I welcome the opportunity should there be enough interest. There remains an open question hanging in the air about the rate at which new systems will be added, an answer which remains unknown. The availability of a loose public roadmap does contextualize everything neatly, so we know what the current priorities are and in what order new systems will be brought online. Whether it takes months or years is not known, and is a risk that you accept when purchasing any early access game. As delivered on day one, KSP is what the industry likes to call a minimum viable product. It has only the things that are absolutely necessary to function, with some annoying UI glitches. I turned the graphics detail down to 1080 at medium to help keep the frame rates up, and found the game to be reasonably stable on my ROG G15 laptop. It uses an RX 6800M GPU, 32 gigs of crucial aftermarket RAM, running on aftermarket M.2 memory. Water physics, object collision, heat and occlusion, as well as the related graphical systems are not yet implemented. So your re-entry speed is basically unlimited, your ship clips through crests and hovers in the troughs of ocean waves, and you'll phase right through trees on the surface of Kerbin. While the starting experience is lacking in some areas, what is implemented works okay, with strong positive prospects for the future. Bugs, crashes, and glitches abound, with performance varying greatly depending on your individual computer. Don't feel like you're missing out by waiting for a purchase, as there is a lot more to come from a developer that has shown competence and ability to deliver. Whether you wait or buy now, there is or will be plenty of fun to be had. That's all I have for today, so I'll catch you all later.